What? Mr. Angus Wangus making a video? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, it's been like a year <laughs> or something like that. Um, I'm going to try and talk a little faster in my last video because I, it, I I fall asleep when I try to watch it. So my apologies for my past videos where I'm um, not saying anything uh, as much as I should be. Um, I'm just... I've been doing a lot in my life, focused on a lot of other things for the last year or so or whatever. Um, I've been thumping my Bible hard, <laughs> studying my Bible, um, and doing other things. But I want, I've, I'm want i going to be starting to poke around again with my um, projects. I am not sure what the uh, pace will be starting out, but um, uh, video-wise. But uh, that's what it's, what's... A, seems to be happening and uh, I just wanted to make a video because people had been asking me hello to those who've sent me PMs and uh, comments uh, sorry I don't communicate as much on YouTube anymore but, like I used to but um, I wanted to make a video to start out with just to um, break the ice it's been a year right uh, since I made a video way too long uh, my last video was this uh, free energy systems examined and um, I still have my project with that uh, on the go it's actually directly behind the computer <laughs> that you can't see and it'll be underneath the demonstration that we do here in this video but you won't see it uh, I still need to scrounge things for that I've poked away at it a couple times here in the last year but um, again been doing other things but um, again, wanted to make this video a video just to start out, maybe in a to get back in the habit of making videos of this, my projects and the things I'm doing, right? Like I used to. So something that's very intriguing to me, and I think about quite often um, when when I'm out and about <laughs> anywhere, um, is the idea of skin effect and the electric force, and magnetic force of course, magnetic fields, electric fields, and the electric force, but the skin effect is something I, you know when I'm driving down the road and look at the the high voltage wires, you know, I, I think of that because it, it just wouldn't be possible to transport that energy such distances at such volumes unless that was the case, right? And towards the end of the summer, um, I've well, for the last year or two, I've really been reading a lot about Oliver Heaviside. Um, maybe some of you know that um, I've I like to read the old timers like Tesla, Keeley, and Heaviside. I read a lot lately. End of the summer, I read a good biography about him, and um, one of the things that it sort of focused on was the skin effect and Oliver Heaviside's um, influence on our understanding of that. But it's very, very interesting, the idea. <clears throat> and so I wanted to make a video just sort of about that, just talking about it, what is the skin effect. And um, then I have a demonstration uh, that sort of came to my mind where we can see the skin effect, sort of a demonstration of it, you know, we'd be able to see it, sort of, you know, because these are things that truly we cannot see. <laughs> electricity and you know even though you look at an arc a high voltage arc um, I don't think you're actually seeing the electric force you're seeing the um, maybe the uh, results of it flowing through the air breaking it down but anyways so these ideas are from Oliver Heaviside and those of his time there where they were just starting to understand those things um, in telegraph tape cables. But I just wanted to make a video. We'll have a look first at what is it sort of briefly, what is the skin effect and um, how it operates in a wire sort of, you know, basically. And then I have a demonstration I want to do where we can see it, right? So what is the skin effect? Skin effect in a solid wire. The core of the wire actually carries little of the current and more of the current travels on the outside surface of the wire. Now this is <clears throat> holds more true the higher the voltage is or the higher the frequency is 
the more true this is, good, it's going to be more so in the skin. And heavy side at a high voltage and high frequencies would say that the electric force doesn't flow in the wire at all. It flows just on the outside of the wire at high voltages, sufficiently high voltages and or frequency or both. But it's very interesting and it, it really, well, it's all been studied and we have equations for it. And, um, you know, he, <laughs> he was a very thorough guy, as many of those fellows were. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, that's the skin effect. And now we're talking about AC signals or pulse DC, a pulse signal. This is where we're going to see the skin effect in high voltages and high frequency. Um, with the DC current, um, this is why the wire gets red hot and, you know, um, lots of losses. This is why you can't transport electricity with uh, DC very far. We use AC and a high, high, high voltage, you know, and what that does is it causes the electricity to flow on outside of the wire so there are no losses well little losses over this the great distances that we send this energy very cool and these wires are arranged in bunches of three for a reason and um skin effect is part of that reason it all works together right so <clears throat> In AC or pulsed uh, electricity flow, um, we have the skin effect, and uh, we see that. Now, what happens is at the high voltage and high frequency, we have a magnetic field due to the current, right? Now, and this is all happening <laughs> simultaneously at the same time, right? So there's a magnetic field created because of the current and induced eddy currents in the center of the wire oppose the flow of the current but the increased outer edge current um, or the skin right uh, it increases the outer edge current and that's the skin effect so heavy side would say you know this electricity is flowing just outside the wire but why right well he explains very clearly in his writings and his research that it flows in the magnetic field that's created right the magnetic field that's created due to the current that's where it flows right that's where it goes out to flow through that magnetic field and I bet many of you already are thinking of instances and little experiments that we do where, you know, we actually see that, right? Um, the homopolar motor in the water people have done tests with, and, you know, the, the electricity liberates the hydrogen and oxygen in the water, but it does so in a spiral fashion above the um, pole of the magnet. And the reason is, is because the electricity is flowing in that magnetic field, right? Liberating the, the oxygen and the hydrogen ab atoms. And it does so in a spiraling fashion because of the magnetic field. <laughs> but that's actually what's happening there. But I have a, a bit of a demonstration set up uh, using high voltage. First, I want to I want to use my um, ohm meter to to test resistances of the ceramic magnets I'm going to use because they are not electrically conductive actually the uh, ferrite ceramic magnet uh, and I have a piece of ferrite that is also not magnetically it's not magnet mag magnetized and we'll see that that also is not electrically conductive and then we'll watch the um, the arc from my high voltage setup flow through the magnetic field um, and I think we'll demonstrate that pretty clear. But it's an interest, very, very interesting um, idea to me um, because we see it every day in at work, you know, taking advantage of these things. But 
um, we tend not to understand <laughs> these types of things. We just sort of take it for granted and drive by and go to the golf course and hit golf balls. And we don't think about these, the fun electromagnetism that's happening around us while we live our lives. But so anyways, we'll just have a quick look at that. That's what it is. Um, that's the old skin effect. That's what it's all about. Mainly came from this guy and a few others. Um, but uh, now we'll go to the demonstration and have a look at it in action. Hang on. All right, time for the demo. <clears throat> this is my uh, LCR meter. I have it set on uh, resistance. Um, 2K, we'll switch it down to 200. 200 ohm range. It's not going to matter because we're just going to be checking for continuancy, uh, not actual um, resistance. Um, over here is my circuit. I'm going to have behind this uh, towel here is my high voltage setup. You're going to see it in a second. Basically what it is is a 24 volt source DC going to a flyback driver circuit, driving a flyback coil and giving me high voltage. <laughs> Anyways, that's what we want. That's what we need to um, see the skin effect best. Um, is the higher voltage, high frequency. Now I don't know what the frequency. This uh, there's a two N three zero five five transistor in this little circuit, and I've looked it up in the past. I can't remember uh, what frequency it fires at. I'm sure it's dependent on the um, flyback inductor and also the capacitor. Um, I'm going to have a uh, saltwater capacitor hooked up as well. Um, so that's what that is. Um, I have the uh, the resistance setting to 200 uh, ohms. Again, we're just checking for con continuancy. Now here I have, is it in view there? Yes. Okay, here I have, this is just a small piece of ferrite. It actually used to be twice as long as it was and perfect because it was the same length as this. But when I was setting things up, it got sucked into the magnet and broke in half. Dang it. Anyways, um, we're going to check the continuancy of these two pieces just to show that this ferrite is ceramic. It's non-conductive electrically. And we're going to look at that here with the... Um, multimeter resistances. Now hopefully this is showing up good. I have the the terminals on both ends here. It's hard for me to do this and also film. So there we go. And there's no deflection on the meter. There's no there's no um, continuance there. It's non-conductive electrically. Now this is a ceramic magnets, ferrite ceramic magnets. Same thing. We'll have a look. We're touching both ends. And you can try this at home. You know, this isn't hocus pocus. Um, just want to show, um, just for the video, that there's no continuance here. This is not electrically conductive. Now I could take the 24 volt battery and hook a small motor up to it and then hook both ends and the same thing. There's no continuance, the motor won't run, there won't be any flow of electricity. But at a higher voltage we'll be able to see the skin effect at work and that's our next um, video clip going to right now. Hang on. Okay, just a quick clip to show the um, high voltage setup quickly because I'm going to be um, moving in closer to this ruler that I have here. Um, I need a better ruler for videos but anyways here's the 24 volt source here's the flyback driver circuit and that basically takes the 24 volts and creates a pulse with the transistor and it pulses this inductor uh, flyback uh, transformer and then I have the outputs from the flyback transformer. It's being pulsed by the circuit. The output's hooked up to this saltwater capacitor that I made. 
and then also to the capacitor terminals I have a couple wires coming down and that gives me my high voltage now I have a spark of about mm, it's given me a spark an arc of about one and a half centimeters I'm going to turn it on it's very loud I'm not going to be able to talk I'm only going to leave it on for a second so you can see my arc here and then we're going to go to the next clip which will be sort of a close-up and we're going to look at um, the electricity flowing through the magnetic field it's very loud very disruptive <laughs> <laughs> Woo okay so uh, next clip I'm going to be uh, moving in close up to this area we're going to have a look at the length of the arc uh, on its own we're going to have a look at whether the arc goes through this non-magnetized piece of ferrite and then we're going to have a look at whether it goes through this magnetized piece of ferrite that's a bunch of microwave oven magnets stacked together and it's pretty powerful um, but it as we saw in the last clip it's non electrically conductive but this one is magnetic where this little chunk um, that we're also going to take a look at is not uh, magnetic but neither are electrically conductive as we just saw in the last uh, clip so that's what we're going to do. We'll move in close now. Hang on. Okay, got her set up. This is hard to see. I'm so very sorry. My ruler is blue and poor <laughs> for videoing. And my towel choice color is bad. But that's two centimeter, or a centimeter and a half. I have this tuned down to. Um, space wise I'm going to show you again quickly now that I'm up close the arc it's one and a half centimeters again and you'll notice that the arc this is the maximum if I move this any further I'm not going to get an arc across there it's not going to break down the air but you'll notice that this length is shorter than this uh, little piece of ferrite even though it broke it's still um, a proper length for us to have a look at what's happening here so again this is non magnetized uh, non electrically conductive material I'm going to put the electrodes towards the at the ends of this and I'm going to turn the power on now and you see it sizzling. Oh, 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 I'm arcing to my, to my capacitor. Damn it. All right. Let's try that again. But these terminals are touching the ends of this piece of ferrite. There we go. And we'll see what happens now nothing we hear sizzling there is a tiny bit of arcing I have to turn this off because this will get hot very quick um, but there's no arc across that there's no conducting through that piece of ceramic and again as we saw with the ohm meter um, that it doesn't it's non-conductive there is no continuance now let's have a look at the ceramic magnet this is a ferrite magnet now I'm going to when I turn this on the ends are going to be here I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to pick up the ends uh, on the video and I'm going to approximate it to the magnet and what we'll see is an arc that, that goes all the way across which will be about ooh eight and a half nine centimeters whereas previously the arc, all the arc we were able to get was uh, one and a half centimeters right so this will really show that the electric force is flowing through the magnetic field because as we've seen this is not electrically conductive but 
it cranks up the distance the arc can go um, quite a bit. Now I know uh, some people use magnetic quenching on their spark gaps and their Tesla coils and other experiments and things like that. Well, this is why. This is exactly why um, magnetic quenching works in that instance. But you'll see this is not electrically conductive. It's far beyond the one and a half centimeters uh, that my the original arc for this system is able to jump across but when we include the magnetic field in between the terminals we'll see that the electric force flows through the magnetic field a much greater distance so here we go firing it up you might be able to hear it hissing Very interesting. I gotta turn this off because it'll get hot and melt my components. Hopefully you saw that. I had to kneel down while I was doing that. Um, but again, you can see the arc ended up being about, well, maybe seven and a half centimeters. Seven and a half, eight centimeters, right? Whereas originally it would only arc one and a half centimeters. But this, I think, really demonstrates and shows how the high voltage or high frequency is able to flow through the magnetic field, um, purely just through the magnetic field. And that's what's happening with the skin effect. That's why it happens, is because the magnetic field created around the wire, this is where the electric force flows. But I, I wanted to make a video um, just sort of talking about something very interesting to me to start out with. Uh, again, I have my other project from a year ago still on the go. It's directly under where the camera's pointing, actually. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be working on that. Um, I have something I want to do with this um, saltwater capacitor, which I think I'm going to do first because this has really been on my brain uh, the last three days. Had an idea. But um, there you go. I don't know what the pace or rate of my video uploads are going to be. <laughs> I, know, I think maybe people will ask. I don't know what the answer is. But hopefully I'm going to start making some uploads now. It's been a while. Thanks for watching as always. Thanks for sticking with me. And um, I'll have more um, juicy vids for you. Thank you. Bye-bye.